Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Aim High podcast. I'm Bud Evans. I'm here with Chris Podkawa. How you doing today, Pod? Good to be here, Bud. Chris, I've known you for a little while. Do me a favor. Give me a quick intro. My name is Chris. I go by Pod. I've done real estate since 2016. Didn't hit the ground running until making it business-wise until 2019. And here we are, 2023. I've gone through several sides of it, fix and flips to acquisitions and, and dabbling in some coaching and stuff right now. Just moving things all over the place. Yeah, dabbling. That's a nice word for you guys creating this movement with the whole coffee with the captain. It's actually been very great. I've been loving it. The one big movement that I actually do have with that is that I've actually moved it away from wholesaling to just strictly acquisitions. Wholesale is just an exit strategy, but with the way that there's so many exit strategies nowadays, it's not even a matter of wholesaling. It's just like you're acquiring the property. So now it's just strictly acquisitions. It's the procurement of assets. And what we do is we're structuring hundreds of thousands, if not million dollar deals. It's the procurement of assets through acquisitions. And what are you going to do with it afterwards? That's the choice. Once you have it under contract and at that point, now, what do you want to do? Do you want to wholesale it, keep it, buy and hold, whatever? There's so many different things you can do with it. So, Pod, how'd you get into real estate? When I married my wife a long time ago, we she's always been from, she's from the Philippines. And so she's always been into real estate and it's totally different than what it is over here. But so my wife has always known the value of real estate. And we moved out of Phoenix and moved up north to Prescott to a little town up there. We picked up our first rental properties. Actually, it was a two, two two property deal next to each other. And we picked that up and we lived in one and we rented out the other one. And so upon doing that, just mirac miraculously, we stopped off there and the seller wasn't actually intending on selling it. He just, for whatever reason, had mentioned it because it was going to be a rental because we were making a slow transition up there. For whatever reason, she spoke about it selling and on our way back down to Phoenix, we were like, cool, let's go for it. Let's buy it. And we did. Then from there, using our own money. But of course, we didn't really know the, like what I know now. So it really changes things. And then, then for the next three years, we acquired another property and started doing a development on that one. And then, and again, that there was our own money. Not, didn't really know this whole thing. 28, the end of 2018, September 20, 2018 was the big change. That was when my twin girls were born, which are now four years old. But at that point, that was when I made the change to be, be, decide to be a stay at home dad. And so I stayed at home. And so at that time, I was like, what am I going to do? Because I can't go to work. Daycare for two babies is really expensive. So it was like, great, what can I do from home? And I started. So then we were just like, hey, great, get into real estate. So then we started getting into real estate and I started getting into the courses and stuff like that. Fortune Builders is actually where I started from. You got to move up and educate. You got to move on. So I won't say that it was a loss or anything like that. It could have gone differently. And so I'm sitting there. I was known as the guy with the twins. And I'm sitting there walking properties, six-month-old babies walking properties with both my hands full while I'm walking these properties, taking it, having to take a mental note. I don't have it gets right down my checklist because they're up and I got to walk these properties. So I got to sit there and make a mental note of this stuff. And from there, that's where it started. I just been in it ever since. Everybody loved it. That was my thing. Oh, you're that dude with the twins. I'm like, yeah. So I, I always take them to every event and stuff like that. Wherever I go, I take my kids there. I use them all the time. So let's talk about your first deal. What was it that really sparked you? Let's go over some numbers. My first deal came from a wholesaler. Okay. Cause I really wanted to, I thought I really wanted to be hands on because that's where I came from. My background was automotive. So I, I'm good with my hands and everything. And I love doing all that. Get in there and start doing the flips and stuff. And I got my contractors in there. It was just like, it was going good and everything. And what it was, it was an 1100 square foot house that I got for 175,000. And the rehab was about 200. Okay. Now, mind you, when I walk into this property, 1100 square foot house. There's no kitchen. There's the walls for the bathroom. That's it. There's no other walls for the two bedrooms that are supposed to be in there. No, nothing. Just in a kit. The only way that the kitchen was there because of the stove and the refrigerator that were there. No cabinets, no nothing. Nothing was in there. And I'm looking at it and I know this neighborhood. And so I turn around and I'm acquiring this property. And again, you always got to look what the neighborhood's doing now it was on a half acre lot but a 1100 square foot house 
But dude, this thing had a 900 square foot garage. Wow. It was a 900 square foot garage. Now I'm like, doesn't really make sense when it's connected. And I like, it was really badly done up. And so I was like, okay, great. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and take this and convert that garage into livable space. Okay. And I did. It came out awesome. It was a 2,000 square foot house on a half acre with a 600 square foot guest house in the back. Awesome. Again, bought that for 175 rehab. Original rehab was about 150 yeah. And then my holding costs dug into it because I had this hiatus because I had to do, I was converting the garage into livable space and I was closing off the garage and I was going to be in the wall. So at that time I had to get architectural structural engineered blueprints because I got to build up that stem wall between the contractor and the city coming out there and no one being able to talk to each other. It took me back like six, seven months just on this whole thing. And you can't get, you can't get on the city or anything. So I finally get this one day where everyone can able, can come together. Great. Let's meet out there on the property. Now, the contractor, the city comes out there and says, hey, if you dig back the concrete that's running up to the house from the driveway, if you cut that back three feet, you don't even need to do a stem wall. I'm like, great, because I'm taking out that whole concrete driveway. We're not going to have a garage. It's going to be a dirt lot right there, decorative rock. And they're like, okay, yeah, you're good to go. Boom. Then we started hitting it going. Now at that time, I've already lost like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in holding fees, right. hard money. So then now I had to turn around and go out and go find a private money lender to bring in the money so I can start the work so I can get that other money out. And it was just a whole big fiasco. Finally did that beautiful house. The master had its own little wet bar in there, went out to his own little separate deck of the house own bathroom had a seven by 11 foot walk-in closet that actually had its own ac cooled vent because of the vaulted ceiling beautiful loved it granted everywhere jumped it up to it wound up selling for about 4 30 on that all in all after all the extra stuff that was holding fees and extra holding stuff and having to pay out my private lender now that i had to bring into there that i wasn't planning on i still made a cool 30 on that which i was happy with especially for my first flip yeah now mind you the worst part was I ran out of money in the middle with the hard money, and I had to go back and restructure that loan to get more money. And this is my first flip. Yeah. My first flip. And, I, dude, I was losing sleep over it. And then it hit me, and I was like, nope, screw it. I'm not letting this win me. Even if I don't make any money, I'm going to complete it. Because if I did it, what else in life am I going to stop to quit at? So. As long as I powered through, I made it, I still won. Hey, and I still wound up making money on it too. Then that private money lender wanted to go do another one. I was like, okay, great, let's go. So perfect, right? It just went off from there. <laughs> hey, man, it started the train rolling. But I gotta ask you, man. So what was the worst deal that you've ever had? My first one. <laughs> That one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I was adding on square foot, converting the garage. I had to do that whole res check with everything. The city, the building got pushed back and everything, lost a whole bunch of money in that whole in the whole setup. So yes, I would honestly say my very first one was probably my worst deal there too. But hey, I still came out on top. So I'm That's happy. Right. I'm pumped. And look back at that. Swimming. I won. Yeah, I good won. for you, man. That's fantastic. That's awesome. So Chris. I know about the coffee with the captain, but what are you working on now? Right now, so every year I go down a certain path of things that I want to do and like where I want to focus. So like last year I was, because my kids are four, they grow and then they need attention and stuff like that. So at that time I was more staying at home where I could stay at home with them more and I would build out systems. I built out several systems, Podio, REI Reply, dialers and stuff like that. So I've done a lot of, but then it took me away. I didn't like the fact because it was taking me away from real estate. Right. So now this year, this goal started last year and into this year is I was, I'm focusing on acquisitions. I'm raising, I'm sharpening up all my skills. I, that's all I want. That's all I want to do this year. The reason why is because the acquisitions are basically the way I see it. Acquisitions are where it's at. You need help on a deal. Great. I can come in, close that deal, help you structure it up. And I can still interject myself in there to make some money. And I don't have to do anything except talk to the seller. Right. Now, if I get good at that with negotiations and skills of that sort, dude, I'm bomb. I'm the bomb. 
Yeah. And now I want to sit there and essentially make that like a company as a business of acquisition specialists to be able to send out to be able to help out other people. Because we all know that talking to people, talking to your family and friends is one thing, but trying to go out and structure a deal with a complete stranger and like explaining how this would be beneficial for them or what other people are up to, it is a task. It is a very difficult task. And that's where I want to sit there and be nice and streamlined and razor focused on that. Because here's my end goal. My whole end goal is in a couple of years, we're going to be retiring in the Philippines. Okay. We're going to be retiring. Now, I'm not going to be said, done, just full blown sitting on the beach retiring. I'm still going to be doing things. But at the same time, one, building up my network of other investors that I'm more than happy to work with, helping them close their leads, work on their deals and everything, get them on my side, on my team and everything. Then great. Guess what? All I got to do is be over there in the Philippines making those phone calls, kicking back on the sandy beaches. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> hey, that's the dream, hey, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. That's awesome. Hey, I'm going to skip the what's your niche because you just nailed that right <laughs> off the bat with what are you doing now. So let's go right on to, all right, other than the retirement, right, and living on the beach, like what's on the horizon for pot? Building up my rentals. I'm building up my rentals. That's what I love about doing the acquisitions is because then it gives me that opportunity that that deal, that lead that you presented to me, great. If it's something like 20, 30K that, I, that you need to put in there, great. Hey, I'll give you that and I'll become a partner on that deal. Whether or not it's going to be a buy and hold or a fix and flip for you. But hey, guess what? Now I can just come in and essentially I found a deal where I didn't even have to sit there and try to structure it out with cold calling and all that stuff, even though I still do, but I do it for fun because I love to because it keeps my skills sharp. So doing that's where essentially I'm seeing my business going and my future going. But yeah, being over there in the Philippines and stuff and, and having that freedom of, tra of being able to travel back and forth, that is my true sign of freedom. Because as is, we got properties over there. So right now we've been sending money back there to the, to the wife's family. And once we get back there, we've already got properties cash flowing coming in. So it's a good trade off to be over there. Everything's being paid for, got properties over here cash flowing. The other big thing with that is how many people are actually doing international. That's what I want to do. I'll be over there taking Philippine money, bringing it over here you know, and putting it to work here, taking U U.S. money over here, over there, building up developments and stuff over there. So that is my ultimate goal in the end there. Dude, the International. next goal for me is Aruba. I want a property in Aruba. I don't know, man. We'll see what happens. I love it down there. <laughs> so, Pod, what's the one thing that you learned as your wealth increased? Biggie Smalls, more problems, <laughs> more money, more problems. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. You're like, hey, I'll go get some more money to take care of that. Then that creates more problems and everything. So, yeah, it is just uh, one of those things that it's not really all what it's cracked up to be. But once you get things in place... Once you get things the correct things in place, then it get it does get easier itself. Yo, man, tell me if this sounds familiar. I got too much stuff going on. Let me hire somebody. Okay. There you go. Now that I hired somebody, I was able to do more stuff. Now I got more stuff going on. Let me hire somebody, right? <laughs> it's an ever going on task. It, it, it's something always going on. You know, it, it's crazy because people do that. You know, it's funny when you hear like people that have that rich people when they sit there and ask them, I've heard it before. What's your biggest problem that you came across this year? And it's funny when they turn around and say the fact that I didn't spend enough money. Yeah. It's wow. Just knowing the taxes and everything and just having that. It's funny to hear that because it be then becomes a game for people. How do you acquire all this money that you don't actually have, but you have access to everything? It's, and like I tell people, it's like you make a million dollars a year, right? You make a million dollars a year, but you disperse nine hundred thousand of it. You're really you're only taxed on that one hundred thousand because you don't have the rest of it. Yeah. It's not sitting there in your bank, and everything else is just making you money. So as it comes in, you keep pushing it out, and again, back to like you said, the more money comes in, great. I'm gonna have somebody else do that. I'm gonna have somebody else do that. So you're working to make more deals, and it's always a, a constant, but it's fun. Now? The tax strategies and the asset protection alone is well worth getting a professional. Exactly. Good day, High Flyers. Are you ready to take your real estate investment sky high? Aim High REI is the perfect Facebook community for you. Get answers from experienced investors, connect with other motivated individuals, and benefit from valuable resources all in one place. 
If that sounds like something that interests you, join our amazing network today and we will help elevate your investing journey beyond what you think is possible. Simply search Aim High REI on Facebook. And the best part, it's completely free. Do you need help with your business? We can help you get out of a jam or even get you started in real estate. Check us out at BudEvans.com. Thanks. Now back to the show. When you're ready, we're going to get into the soaring four. These are the same four questions that we ask every guest so that we can help someone who's just starting out achieve new heights. Are you ready? Sure. Let's go for it. All right. Fantastic, man. What is one thing that you use to keep you motivated? To keep me on track, I use my calendar so it keeps me going. Uh, really just knowing that I have that I have this freedom for myself, that it's just me. I get to get up whenever I want, get to be there, do whatever I want, when I want and everything and having that freedom. That's what keeps me motivated there is because once I lose that, then I'm, then that's God. I'd love to have that. I can get up and exercise whenever I want. I don't have to go to work to, to go to a bad W2 and worry about the driving and the traffic and all that stuff. I get to go when I want and do what I want. Yeah. Man, I just had this conversation with a student the other day and I said it on coaching for Tarek. I said, having a W2 job is easy, even if it's horrible, right? Because you wake up, you do what they tell you to do. You come home at the end of the day, you live your miserable life. I am so busy and running like there's no tomorrow. I am working now harder than I ever did. I'm working now more retired than I did when I was actually working full time. But you're so, working for yourself, though. Exactly. I'd rather do 105 hours for myself than 40 hours for somebody else, brother. That was like my first, that was like my very first flip. That that one that I made 60k on. I sat back for that year and I was like, man, what did I? I basically made what. I made the, uh, the job that I did the year before going back and forth to work and having to be there Monday through Friday and the overtime. And I'm like, man, like I made pretty close to doing that. And what did I just do this year? I got to be at home with my kids. I got to sleep in, take naps throughout the day, go have fun, go walk properties, go just talk to people and just have a good time. But I got to be there for my kids. And I'm like, hell yeah, I couldn't beat it. Yeah, man. So, what is one thing that completely changed your mindset? Listening to others and their challenges, because what other what others what challenges others may not be what challenges me, but to hear what others are taking on as a challenge and after you get to know them and you know what their life is and just knowing, hey, you know what? I can do that. I can do this. Let's take this up. It, it's a, it's a it's just keeping my mind fresh, always learning something new. See other people around me and stuff, and it's, they just give up at a certain time. And I'm like, dude, I'm not going to do that. I don't care. Even though I'm going to be retired, I'm still going to be doing something. And I, because I can't just sit around, I, I have to be doing something. I don't really care what it is, but if I'm not doing this and it's self sustained and my kids are taking over, dude, I'm going to be doing something else. Yeah, man. Always learning, aren't we? Yep. Constantly students of the game, but that's why I like you. Exactly. All right. So you might have already answered this one, but what is one thing that you use to keep you on track? My calendar, yeah. definitely. And what I mean by that is not just, okay, making calls. Like I said, I still do the, those calls and I do those within the coffee shop. from time to time. I do that in the virtual office so others can see me be successful and fail because a lot of times people don't do that. But what I do is on my calendar, it's not just, hey, I'm going to make cold calls sometime throughout the day no it's on there so eight o'clock eight o'clock is when my day starts eight to ten i'm in my system making upgrades changes new automations things like that going through those leads 10 to 12 i'm making cold calls okay and then 12 to 2 i'm doing my follow-ups right and then two to two to four is I'm going through and I have what's called other items such as still continuing with follow-ups or details, property walk through, structuring deals, writing up contracts, you know, looking over contracts, doing realtor outreach, reaching out to other investors, whatever it is. Now those there are all just marked on my calendar. I'm not marked out as busy on those, but it's a blueprint for what it is that I need to be doing. So if at any point in the day, I'm like, man, okay, what do I need to be doing right now? Boom, I can pull that up and I can see, okay, 10 to, 10 to 12, I should be making calls. Let's do that. And then that way that there helps keep me in track, keep me in check, keep me in line and stuff. And I just do that set up Monday through Friday. And every month out there changes. There's, I'll change it around where 10 to 12, I'm doing cold calls next week. Next month, I'm doing 12 to 2 making cold calls. And I'll switch it up just so that way I'm always there. But by doing that, it gets my mindset and ready to move on to that next path. There you go, man. Staying organized, staying busy. 
Yep. So, Pod, let's go back in time. What's one thing you'd change if you had to start over? Now, I've been thinking about this question, too, because it's, it's really hard. Because there's things that you wish that you didn't do. You wouldn't be who you are and where you are today if that stuff didn't happen. So, do I wish I spent so much money on, on, on a curriculum? <laughs> yeah, I do wish I didn't spend that much money. But if I didn't do that, I also wouldn't have made the connections that I know now. I wouldn't have met you, wouldn't know everybody else that I know, and I also wouldn't have moved on to to progress to where I'm at now. So that's what I would say about that. But here's what I here's what I would like to just throw out there to everybody is that there's no one course, there's no one setup for there's no one all be all course. You always have to be expanding. You always have to be expanding your mind. You're not going to learn everything in the one stop shop. You know, it's not going to be there. So you learn about this here, you learn about this here, and you want to talk to those masterful people in each one of those categories. So that way you can progress. So you can advance. I'm up and I'm out working out and going for runs and walks and stuff every morning for an hour. And that's an hour that I have that I minimum in a day that I have a book in my ear, put my earbuds in and I go out and I listen to it and I listen to it. Sometimes we're listening to those chapters over and over. I've got books that I listen to all the time. That I've listened to more than several times, but it's always growing and expanding my own mind. So that way I can get better. The more practice that you put in is the experience that you're going to get. So you have to put in that practice, whether it be making cold calls, making offers, just talking to realtors, practice talking to sellers, practice walking properties. You have to do that so you can get better at anything in life. Without the practice, you don't get experience. And yet in this, you need the experience. And so without the practice, you ain't getting no, no experience. You can't just sit there and go, hey, I took this course. I know it all. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> you you have to go out and apply it. That's it, man. Hey, I forget who said it, but somebody said you got to do 10,000 reps of something to make it like common practice and habit. Man, it's the same thing with this, right? You're throwing that deal analyzer out there and you're running through the same thing and you're making the same calls and using the same scripts over and over again. And even when you think you have it down, there's always something. There's always that one thing that you may or may not miss on a call that can completely destroy the, the motivation of the seller, right? Exactly. Exactly. And you have to stay up on that. It's always changing. The way that somebody says something is their voice, their demeanor, the way, the wording that they use. Very good example that a lot of people miss is, hey, I'm looking to buy a property at Banana Street. No, I'm not selling that one. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. And they just move on. That right there in itself, I'm not selling that one. You yeah. have other properties. Great. What else do you have? Like you're not selling that one. What else do you have? You know, but people don't pick up on those little things. And that's where, like I said, this year I'm focusing on acquisitions so I can really narrow that down and focus on that and be able to pick up on those things and make myself that much, make myself that much better and that much more skilled in doing that and in, in the procurement of assets. Fantastic. Hey, Pod, listen, man, thank you very much. I appreciate you and I appreciate everything that you're doing in the tribe. Thank you for that. Thank you for taking on my nephew under your wing, too, by the way. He'll eventually <laughs> get it, I promise. <laughs> thank Johnny, you. Thank you. Man, buddy, I'm waiting, counting on you. You'll get it. Ab absolutely. It's just, I keep telling everybody every day practice and you're going to get that experience. Are you ready to take your real estate investment sky high? Aim High REI is the perfect Facebook community for you. Get answers from experienced investors, connect with other motivated individuals, and benefit from valuable resources all in one place. If that sounds like something that interests you, join our amazing network today and we will help elevate your investing journey beyond what you think is possible. Simply search Aim High REI on Facebook. And the best part, it's completely free. Do you need help with your business? We can help you get out of a jam or even get you started in real estate. Check us out at BudEvans.com. Thanks. Now back to the show. That's it, buddy. Pod, if somebody wanted to reach out to you, how would they go ahead and do that? Find me. Just look me up on Facebook oh, with Pod and my name will come up. But yeah, you can reach out at me on Instagram, Chris underscore Podqua, just like you see it right there on the screen, or my phone number 602-899-4763, which is for Pod. Thank you very much, Pod, for coming on. I know you're busy, and I really do appreciate your time. Absolutely, bud. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And to anyone else who is listening or watching, until the next time we meet, aim high.